Hey there, everyone. It's Denise Salcedo. Welcome back to the channel. I am very excited to introduce to you my guest for today. He is the creative director of Triple A. He is also a wrestling legend and icon, ladies and gentlemen, Conan. Hi, Conan. Yo, what's up? How you doing? Good to see you again. I know. I'm so glad. You know, I was kind of just talking about this with you uh, off the air, but the last time that you and I did an interview together was back in September of 2020. So that was about, you know, two years ago and so much has happened. But before I get into that, I want to tell you, because after that interview, I would say, and now I've done like hundreds of interviews, I would say your interview was top five, top five in terms of positive reaction and how much people love that interview. It was a fan favorite. So I wanted to let you know that. That's very good to hear because usually, unfortunately, sometimes, you know, the fans are very hypersensitive, hypercritical and kind of to toxic. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I so get you it. Just never know, you know, what mood they're going to be in with what you're saying. So that's cool to hear. No, I was so happy with the feedback that I got from that interview. And to this day, uh, I still have, even now that it's been so long, I still have people that tell me that they watched it. And I'm like, oh my God, that interview is from back from 2020 and people are still watching it. That is so awesome. So I'm very happy to kind of have like an updated interview and now um, and all of that. So Conan, before we get into all of the wrestling details and everything about that, I do want to ask you though, how you're doing, uh, you know, how, how are you? Um, not that healthy at the moment. I'm just waiting for a kidney transplant. Once I get that, then I think my life will be, will be normal, but we're hanging in there and we got, um, you know, hoping to get this done before the year's over. Well, I'm very happy that, uh, you know, at least, you know, you're here and we're able to talk. And you know, I know I was I, I hate to say it this way, but I was reading everything that was, you know, put up about you in terms of your health. And I was keeping updated, you know, through all the articles that I was seeing online. And I know that it's always different to get the firsthand perspective and read yeah. things via an article. But, you know, at that time, that was the only thing that was out there. So right. uh, I, I am very happy that at least you're here and we're talking and, you know, we're moving forward. All right. Thank you. So let's go ahead and jump into this because uh, we have three big events. We just had on April 30th, we had the Monterey show for Triple Mania and 30 years. And now we're going to be having on June 18th, uh, the second portion over in Tijuana. And then we have our final one in Mexico City in October 15th. So as the creative director, and I know you take on a lot of different roles and aspects within AAA, I do want to start off by asking you, what is it like uh, planning for three shows, especially of this magnitude? Well, it's very difficult because it's hard to top the other one and it's almost, can you top this? So I, we, I try not to fall into that trap. And at the end of the day, as, as long as we entertain people, I'm happy because I was in the very first triple mania. So I've seen this company in it, you know, grow up. And I really believe that after the Monterey show, which was April 30th, um, we really showed people that we can be on the same level of what they're doing in the United States. The production was outstanding. The screens are bigger than usual. The pyrotechnics were incredible. We had the jets flying up above. We had some great matches. And so, you know, uh, everything's, everything, everything's coming together. And we really have a special show, you know, lined up for, for Tijuana, which is obviously the place where I started wrestling. So it's a special place for me. So in terms of like your role and everything that you do, how do you make sure that, you know, uh, how's the planning, like the technical aspects of the planning for the shows and making sure, you know, you, cr you, you have all of your I's dotted and all of your T's crossed, et cetera. Well, the problem is, and, and I was explaining to this to you before in such a hypocritical, sensitive uh, wrestling fan base that we have, and I'm going to give you a good example. And this is the best example I ever heard. And I was like, wow, I was kind of blown away by that. If you remember Eric Van Wagenen, he was executive producer of Lucha Underground. He also worked on Survivor and he worked on Apprentice. These were shows that were getting millions and millions of viewers. Lucha Underground was not getting millions of viewers. And he told me that he got more emails from Lucha fans than Survivor and Apprentice fans combined. So that just shows you how fanatical our fans are, you know. And so 
you know, you're never going to have everybody happy. Uh, so what you're trying to do is you're just trying to bring stuff that's never been done before with some stuff that people do like with some legends with some high flyers with surprises with a run in, you know, I think the one thing that I've always tried to pride myself on with AAA is that if you miss a show, you feel you're missing something because something always happens on our show and we always try to over deliver. So you have a reason to watch the show, you know, and that's my main thing, you know, not trying to do what I did before, because sometimes you cannot do something that's really, really good. You can just either match it or a little bit below it. But as long as the people are entertained and they're happy and you can tell you, you can go outside and you can see, you can hear for yourself. I don't really listen too much to critics because, and I don't mean this in a demeaning way, and it'll probably come out like this. Everybody thinks they're an expert now. You know, anybody can fucking be a, have a blog or a podcast, and anybody can have an opinion, and that's cool. But there's levels to your opinion. And a lot of times people try to tell me what's going on in my company. And I'm like, bro, I work there. I work in the inside where there's no way you would know what's going on. So how are you telling me what's going on? And they'll fight me on it, you know, but um, getting back to your original question, Denise, the thing is, how do we entertain the people? How do we make sure they leave happy, you know, and we have the ability with that because we have creative control over finishes and, and, and you're basically manipulating emotions is what you're doing. That's exactly what it is. And, you know, obviously I watched the show and I, you, I, when you said like there was a little bit of everything, it's true. You know, you had, you had legends, you had matches that brought like this intense amount of heat. You had your high flyers doing all of these really cool things. The production of uh, the intro was absolutely a uh, very, very, very cool. The way that you guys did it, it just had like this very big uh, feel to it. So I right. think all of those little things, you know, they add to the presentation of a show. So it, it is like pretty cool to to kind of see how it's developing and i'm very excited to see like the difference in all the three shows because the all the three shows are going to tie into each other especially with the uh dude with the ruleta de la muerte they're all going to tie into each other right. in that sort of way but regardless i'm interested to see how different each show is going to kind of be but uh, let's go ahead and jump right into that so let's talk about the uh the ruleta de la muerte so um one of the things that i noticed well that everybody noticed right away is that you brought in uh quite a few legends for that you had you had connect you had viano four rayo de jalisco you also had ultimo dragon uh what was the reaction of these guys when this opportunity was approached to them given that you know it had been a second since we you know seen them wrestle in the ring so can you kind of tell us a little bit about the reactions for all of that i think all of them were happy to be back and have their fans see him you know, one last time because, you know, Connect hadn't been on TV in many years. Neither had Villano, neither had Dragon. You know, none of the legends had, you know, they were kind of like on the indie circuit doing their thing. And it was like, hey, you know, we're going to put you on this main platform. And they were like, some of them were kind of afraid that, you know, how they would look, you know, because they weren't that active, you know. And I tried to keep as much as the matches as I could short. Because I was like, bro, some of these are going to be bad, you know. But at the end of the day, nostalgia sells. You know, when we brought back um, the Vipers and Psychosis, I wasn't in AAA when the Vipers were a big deal. But I would always read, people would always say, why don't you bring back the Vipers? And I grew up on the Vipers and the Vipers. And I thought, well, fuck, why don't I bring them back and let's see what happens? And they've been a humongous hit, you know. So then I thought, Hmm. And I brought Cybernetico back. Oh my God, he's over like Rover. Then I brought Tirantes back, the, the original Tirantes, the guy that was in Triple Mania One, and he did an angle with his son. It was super over. Then we brought Heavy Metal back. He got over and he's still over. And, you know, Charlie Manson came back, mega over. You know, and these were things that I hadn't done before because I was trying to kind of bring in young talent. And get rid of the old talent because they were really kind of a, they weren't letting the young guys grow, you know, and other factors. And now we're bringing them back one by one. And the good thing is they've all kind of changed their way of thinking. Being outside of AAA and not being kind of relevant kind of made them see what they lost. And they all have come back and they've come back to do business. So it's been easier to work with them this time around. 
And in terms of the fan base, because, you know, every fan base is, is different depending on the company. Some people really like the nostalgia. Some people don't. Some people are all about the young guys. Some people like a balance. Um, right. For Triple for A, like, where do you see that in terms of, like, how do you find the balance? Because, you know, you So that's exactly what I yeah. do. You know, I make sure that I have a little bit for everything. Nostalgia for the people who like nostalgia. People like high flying. They got high flying. You like wrestling. If you got intergender wrestling, if you like extreme wrestling, if you like foreigners, if you like the indie style, which I call the video game matches, which are like the first two matches where it doesn't matter if they don't sell. They're just there to fucking, I mean, excuse me, to do like cool stuff. You know what I'm saying? And so it's a little bit for everybody. And I think everybody leaves happy, you know, because if you look at our demographic, we're, you know, we don't, we're not heavy men. We're not heavy women. We're not heavy kids. We're heavy everything. That's a beautiful thing to see. And was there any talent that you tried to get for, uh, for it or that didn't, that it didn't pan out? Like, was there yes. anything you tried to get? And if so, can, if, if you want to say any of those names, like who they were that for you For various get? reasons, yeah, we couldn't get them. There were some guys from AW we couldn't get. And, uh, like, we were going to do this angle, this real, real, real cool angle. Um, I don't even want to spoil it because I might still be able to do it. But um, there was a real great angle that was going to happen in uh, Monterey, and it would have gone to Tijuana, and it culminated in, in Mexico City. I'll tell you one of the guys that was in it was Rush. Oh, so, man. Yeah. And so, but anyways, we may still be able to do it. Um, but I was kind of bummed that I wasn't able to do that angle because it would have been, believe me, really hot. But sometimes that happens, you know, you get lucky and some things fall through the cracks. Sometimes you can't come to, to an agreement and it is what it is. Right, exactly, exactly. So now with the four remaining guys, uh, Psycho Clown, you got Viana Four, uh, Blue Demon Jr., Pentagon Jr., and the Ruleta de la Muerte. Eh, who do you think is going to be like, in terms of what match do you think that the two final guys, what two final guys do you think would be the biggest in terms of for the mask versus mask match at the end, like the biggest attraction? Um, I don't know. I think Pentagon versus Psycho would be a very good one. Oh, that's that's interesting because I actually thought you I, I my my opinion was actually that I thought it would be uh, Blue Demon and Psycho Clown as the biggest attraction. Like that's kind of like when I was kind of, you know, trying to brainstorm or yeah. trying to, you know, speculate or predict what I thought was going to happen. I think that's kind of the one that I kind of bro. It has at. to be to me, Pentagon and him, because it's like who would lose there. Right. That's true. That, that's a great match. Those, those are the are our two studs, you know. Obviously, Psycho and Demon could be interesting. I mean, we'll see what happens. That's the whole thing, you know. And just like the women, you know, for the first time ever, you're going to have seven women. They're all under 30 years old, with the exception of a Chica Tormenta. So they're all young girls. Uh, they're in a cage, which has never been done before. And then the last two that stay in the cage will meet in a one-on-one. -on -one. So that's historical because it's never been done before, you know. And uh, so that's going to be really cool because these girls are definitely the new era of female wrestling, which I'm a big proponent of. I'm a big proponent of exoticos. I'm a big proponent of intergender matches. And I'm a big proponent of anything that's not the norm. You know? Yes, yes, because yeah. you got to do something different, right? You right. got to appeal to different audiences. And if you keep doing the exact same thing, you're never going to get anywhere, right? Right. A little bit of everything. So, um, one of the speaking of new and things that we hadn't technically seen, uh, let's talk about the Hardy Boys because the Hardy Boys are coming to Triple A for the first time and in Triple Mania in Tijuana. Uh, how long have uh, how long has Triple A wanted to book uh the Hardy Boys for? And in terms of what does it mean to be able to get a team like the Hardy Boys to kind of have that crossover appeal with maybe a broader audience? Yeah, right. I love Jeff and Matt on a personal level, two of the coolest guys I've ever met in this business. I have nothing but respect and love for them. And, you know, they changed the business and what they've done. You know, they put their body on the line. You know, it really hurts me sometimes to see Jeff, the, the, the condition he's in. I think in AEW, they should only use him once a month, you know, and let him heal up. But anyways, the fact that we've got one of the greatest arguably tag teams in history to come to Mexico on such a big scene, that's big because obviously, like you said, 
what part of the strategy is for American fans to see them. But while they're seeing them, they're seeing our product and they can fall in love with what we're doing. Of course, uh, buyer be warned. Uh, you know, this is not American wrestling. It's called Lucha Libre. There's a lot of stuff we don't do that you do. So when you see that we don't tag, when you see that we have a heel ref, when you see all those things you're not used to, and you're like, well, welcome to, because it's Lucha Libre. Just like Japanese wrestling is strong style and British have their style, that's our stilo. That's what we like, you know? That was one of the things I was going to ask you, too, because, you know, for those casual people that tune in for the casual, you know, American fans or maybe even the non casuals, but that might tune into the show. uh, What do you think it's the hardest thing for them to kind of like get used to when they're watching, uh, you know, Lucha? That that because they're educated and I understand they're because I grew up in the United States. So when I first saw Mexican wrestling, I was 23 years old and I was like, what the hell is going on here? You know, that's not what I was used to. I, that's not what I grew up watching. Then I opened up my mind and I was like, okay, this is, okay, the place is full. These people understanding what's going on. I'm the one that needs to join the group, not them join me, you know? So I started to follow the culture and ask questions and go, okay, that's why, okay, okay, this works. They like this here. This is culturally relevant in Mexico. It isn't culturally relevant in the United States and it is what it is. And so I love the wackiness, the creativity, everything about Lucha Libre, the pageantry, the mass, the rabidness of the fans, the everything. I just, this is just something that I love. It's something that I advocate, something that I've always been behind. That's why you've seen how I try to open so many doors for, you know, luchadors in the United States and how much I fought for them to respect us, you know, and there is a modicum of respect because if you look at American wrestling, it has a lot of lucha in it now, which it didn't used to have any at all. And every promotion has luchadors. And you mentioned, you know, fighting for that and, you know, having more of that uh, lucha influence. But I think a huge topic and uh, I, you know, I kind of do want to dive into this a little bit. And it's, it's been discussed how, you know, there really still isn't, I would say. And do you think that there's enough of that Latino representation in wrestling right now in terms of being treated in terms of like big stars? Because I don't think so, but I kind of wanted to get your opinion no, on it. No, because you got to remember, they don't make their money. I had a conversation with Vince McMahon, not too, well, uh, now it's probably two years ago. But I had a conversation with him, and one of the things that he told me, and he was right, you know, he was like, well, really, there's no money in Mexico. I can make more money off the Mexican Hispanics in the United States, right? And Which is probably right. But... At the same time, it's a huge market that you're missing out on. Plus, you're missing the Mexican-American market because, as I told him at the time, I said, with all due respect, you're not really taking advantage of Lucha Libre. You have you have Mexican wrestlers doing Lucha moves within the confine of an American match. You have straight Lucha Libre, you know? And uh, But anyways, I just think that neither Tony nor Vince not being Latino understand the Latino market. They haven't really made their money off Latinos. You know, all their money's never really been made off of them. So they don't understand the power, but they should be way smarter than that because for the simple fact that a, we are the number one minority in the United States with tremendous purchasing power and political power. Not only that, there's a brand loyalty amongst Latinos that even politicians know about. When they like something, they'll follow it from crib to old elderly. All you got to do is like, I grew up in a time, Denise, and you're in a different time and you tell me if I'm wrong. I grew up in a time where there was no Latino singers on the charts. Now I hear songs in Spanish on English stations like Bad Bunny and Osuna. And you know, right? Am I right? And cross collaborations with yeah, like English Carol speaking G. artists and Spanish artists. Yeah, yes. Snoop Dogg with Banda, whatever that song. That's great. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, but, I know what you're saying. Yeah, for sure. You know, before and like, there wasn't that. And the music industry has understood, you know, the 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 power of the 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 Latino. You know what I'm saying? Where wrestling's always been behind the curve. You know. And I just think it's going to take a promotion like AAA to come to the United States and do it their way, the Mexican way. And 
you know, we're going to turn some heads. One match that I'm very, uh, that I, I'm, I'm looking forward to, which I think is going to be a guaranteed five-star match, is, um, is the uh, Doubters versus Bandito versus uh, Phoenix versus Hijo the Vikingo match. These are, without a doubt, the best wrestlers in the world, the most creative wrestlers in the world, and they're going to go out there and they're going to be showing and proving that match is going to be great. And these are, you know, these are guys that we have definitely, I mean, you know, Phoenix is a, you know, Phoenix is a big one. Bandito is a big one in terms of guys that have been already breaking out in the United States. But same thing with Thouders, you know, he's been on Impact Wrestling. Uh, and if, uh, also, you know, Laredo Kid has been doing his thing as well. Bandito. Uh, how do you feel about, uh, you know, who might be the next breakout star in the United States? It's that here's the thing, Denise, and this is the truth. It isn't up to the wrestler. They all have talent to make it. It's up to the promotion. So what do you I do? I mean, you, when you look at when you look at Raw, I mean, look at Angel Garza. He looks like a fucking movie star. Why are and they? He has the this? charisma. Right. Why and he can wrestle. So does Umberto. Why are they doing this kiss cam bullshit and fucking losing the Rajat Singh and the other Shanky, the dancing thing? Like, bro, you could be bringing in female le- girls because they're good looking guys. You could bring in Latinos that are proud to see Latinos doing it. You know, I don't know. For a while, they were tapping into Priest's Latin thing with the Bad Bunny thing. And now he's with Edge and we don't even know he's Latino anymore. Like, that's not. They don't make their money off the Latin demographics. They don't understand it. It is not something that they've cared about, and it doesn't seem like they do. You know, look at the god of all gods, bro, Rey Mysterio. He's in great shape, still, still can go in the ring, okay? Fresh gear. What the hell is he doing? Nothing. Right. You know, so it's up to the company. It doesn't matter how much talent you have. You can have all the talent in the world, but if the company isn't behind you, that's WWE's fault. Why do you think that is? Why do you think it is that you have this, you know, whole country where you could be getting these incredibly talented wrestlers that go out there and let's be real when you see that lucha style when the american fans see it they're like you know like oh my god that's so cool it's such an easy wrestling style to get into why is it that especially having seen the success that eddie guerrero had that Rey mysterio had why isn't that we don't see that rep- that we don't see uh you know these these guys being represented in top spots but rather sort of us uh, diminished to these very very tiny uh jobber roles let's be real in the company i don't know i don't i can't i can't get in the mind of another man i just can't think that as smart as they are they haven't figured that out you know they should have two or three women that you know are super over their latinas uh and not token but that they can go there's a lot of talented women raquel looks you know she's like she's got a she looks like she has a great future you know and 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 so i just like i said i think they've never really made money with the latino market and but that's on them bro look at how much money the music industry is making exactly exactly and so you know one of the people that also people tend to gravitate a, a lot to, especially in terms of Mexico, uh, is Hijo de Vikingo. He is definitely somebody that I would say is somebody that people just gravitate towards because he does really awesome stuff that a lot of people, including myself, didn't even think were uh, imaginable, didn't even think they were possible. Uh, is there somebody that is that we haven't been paying close attention to that you think there should be more for more focus on, you know, somebody like an Ijo de Vikingo, uh, somebody that you think fans should be paying close attention to. I think, you know, Ares is really good. Latigo is really good. Um, Aramis, uh, Commander reminds me a lot of Vikingo. Uh, another kid called Baby Extreme, which will probably end up changing his name. So there's a couple really good high flyers you know, like Ijo the Vikingo coming up the pipeline. So already, that's always been one of my things, like, you know, from the Rey Mysterio to the Phoenix to the Vikingos to the Commanders to, I always like to have a couple really, you know, outstanding high flyers. The thing that I love about Vikingo is that 
He's a good looking kid, humble kid, uh, great wrestler, and he's just getting started, man. The best is yet to come with that guy. So it's been a pleasure to work with him. Yeah. Agreed. And some of the other things that I want to touch on in terms of the card, I do want to ask you about the Copa Triple Mania. I know that it's been promoted that there's going to be 13 uh, Super Estrellas. Uh, is there anything that you can tell us of what we can expect from that, whom we may expect to see in the match? Um, the only thing I could tell you, because they're all surprises, okay? So, you know, it's like a Royal Rumble type deal. Um, you'll see a lot of... Uh, 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 nostalgic guys in it. So we'll, there'll be a lot of definite pops. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I'm excited about that. Okay. So now I do, cause we, one of the things that you touched on a little bit and I wanted to rewind and make sure I, I, I unpack that a little bit more was you mentioned, um, you know, Triple A being that company that can show, you know, these American promotions like AEW and WWE that, hey, this is how you, you know, this is how you utilize Lucha and this is how you make money with Hispanics, etc. So with that being said, with that being said, we're seeing this expansion in Triple A. We're seeing, uh, you know, uh, coverage now on Fight TV, which is pretty huge. And then so... A lot of fans have been wondering, when is it that we're going to be seeing uh, AAA run shows in these big Hispanic markets like the Los Angeles market, Chicago, et cetera? When do you think we'll, we'll end up seeing that? Okay, even though every time I say this, certain blogs will say, oh, there's Conan again making promises he can't keep. If there's anything I said, it, it was because it was going to happen. Shit changes. <laughs> Can we give, you know... Um, but I can guarantee you 100%. We have a couple venues in the United States. I can't, it's not for me to say it at this time where we're working at in major Hispanic hubs where AAA will be making an appearance. The other thing that I can say, and I can't say too much about this, but we are in negotiations that come to the United States in a very, very big way on TV. And my whole thing is I just want to go out there and, show the fans and everybody what Lucha Libre is all about, what they've been missing, what hasn't been adequately used. I want to make Latinos proud. There's some stuff you're going to see there. You'll be proud as, as a Latina. And, uh, you know, um, I'm amped because maybe 20 years ago, if I would have done this, I wasn't ready. I'm ready now. I know what, I know what Latinos want. I know what the American fans want. And, uh, you know, and I'll have the resources. And AAA, one of the things that hurts us a lot is we don't have the resources, you know, to do a lot of the stuff I'd like to do. Um, we're starting to get them, and that's why our shows are tighter. Um, but uh, we got some cool shit coming, and we're deaf. There's a reason why we're on Fight TV. There's a reason we're back on YouTube. If you remember, we were geo blocked for a while because those are our baby steps into coming to the United States and it's going to happen. It's an inevitable. One of my favorite lines of all time is by Victor Hugo, where he says, there's nothing more powerful than idea whose time has come. It's time for Lucha Libre. And let me just say one last thing about the Hardy boys match. I'm really, really, really stoked, really happy that they came back to Tijuana. We had used them in Tijuana in a show with Crash about maybe four years ago. And they did phenomenal business for us. They did a meet and greet that was through the roof. They had a great match. And the people from Tijuana never forgot them. They loved them because that's how Mexicans are. They're passionate. They don't forget when somebody goes over there and doesn't fucking call it in. And the Hermanos Lee, Dragon Lee, and Dralistico, they're chomping at the bit. You know, they, they want to go out there and have a great match, you know. And... This is going to be a good show because it's Triple Mania 30. And I do want to ask this question, and I don't know if it may be silly or not, but, right. uh, you know, we, uh, you know, Triple A has had relationships with Impact Wrestling, uh, you know, for a very long time now, many years. And then also, you know, with their AEW talent, et cetera, we've seen that exchange there, you know, a couple of times and whatnot. And, uh, you know, we do have that forbidden show coming up with New Japan and AEW. Do you think that there's ever going to be like a, maybe an AEW Triple A show along the same lines of like what they're doing with New Japan? Maybe, but but I doubt it because Tony has so much on his plate. I mean, where does he even find the time for all of this? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I would I would love to do that. And I'm sure it could be done because where I'm very good. Tony's been real, real cool with us. You know, I have to always say that because he has been. Um, and uh, but 
you know, uh, we also have, and I wish our relationship was better with New Japan because they've got this old school mentality where, oh, we only work with CMLL, you know, which is unfortunate. But either way, you never know. Everything's possible in this crazy business of ours. But the good thing is, is that, you know, AAA is on fire right now. The product's really hot. I want to invite anybody that's in the Las Vegas, San Diego, Los Angeles, you know, Arizona, Chicali area to come down and check us out in person because there's nothing like being there in person. You know, one thing's watching it on TV, but as you know, when you're there in person, it's a whole different vibe, you know? And so, and if you can't, make it out to Cali, support the show and watch some good wrestling on Fight TV. And my last question before, uh, you know, we uh, wrap it up. I do want to, and first of all, since you've been here from the start and since you knew you're a huge part of the history of Triple A, Triple Mania, everything, uh, what, is, what do these three shows mean to you right now? And I also want to give you the floor to go ahead and promote anything else that we didn't touch on, uh, you know, more in depth during this interview that's happening on Triple Mania. Well, I just think it's, uh, it's just 30 years of, of, of Antonio Pena's vision. He, to me, is one of the smartest guys I ever met in this business. And I consider him like a father and a mentor. And he was the first guy that believed in me and kind of, you know, showed me a lot of the ropes. So I'm just continuing his legacy. I know this is what he would have li loved. And I hope that when I'm not here, they continue the legacy that I continued from him. Um, 30 years, what it's incredible. I was, like I said, I was in the very first one and to see the growth of where we were before and where we are now is incredible. Um, Dorian Rodan has turned out to be just like his uncle, a visionary. You know, a lot of these huge production ideas and all this stuff that we're seeing now and taking it to another level and aggressively attacking the United States, you know, it's because of him. Um, and so it's a pleasure to work with somebody that's so open minded and gives me the latitude to do that. What I think is best for the company without all the bullshit micromanagement they used to do to me before and over the shoulder shit. And just let me do my job, you know, because I always used to tell them, imagine what I could do if you let me do what I know how to do. Unhand unhandcuff me. Take the, take the, and it's been a beautiful four years since I've come back. Uh, just of new talent and good ideas. And is everything a home run? Of course not. But you got to experiment and sometimes strike out and not do that again. And you know, Denise, at the end of the day, why would I damage my own product? Why would I do something that goes against it? I, I, I still look at it as a fan. I still go out and watch matches and pop and get emotional and my adrenaline goes up and they'll come back and I'll hug them and I'll say, what a fucking great match. Or, I told you not to do that. Don't do it again, you know, or whatever it is. But I get caught up in the moment too, you know. I love what I do and I love to entertain fans. And there's nothing better when people leave and I hear them and they'll be, what a great match. Or I can't believe the referee did this or what's going to happen next. Or I'll ask them, I go, what do you think of the show? And they'll tell you there real time. I didn't like this. I like this. I love this. I didn't like this. And so it's a real good feeling. We're, we're really right now burning on all cylinders. I love it. I'm excited. Just like hearing you talk about it has gotten me even more excited personally. Conan, I thank you so much for your time to come on here and chat with me. As always, I always feel like we have great interviews and just an easy person to chat with. So thank you so much. Um, guys, I'm going to put all of the links in the description box below where you guys can watch Triple Mania. You guys can watch part two that is coming up on June 18th, taking place in Tijuana. It's going to be airing on Fight TV and PWTV global you can already pre-order once again all of the links will be in the description box below but other than that i'm denise salcedo this is conan and we'll see you guys next time and Bye, let me everyone. shout out one one let me, oh, yeah, let me right can ahead. I, I forgot yes please i have to shout this out my podcast keeping it 100 with conan and disco and you can check that out on apple spotify youtube and facebook boom and i'm gonna put the links in the description box below for that as well thank you right. so much thank guys you. Be Bye, good. everyone